All right, so in the last session of our KOE series, we showed you architectural elements and how to use them to recreate your client space. Today, we're going to have some fun. So Julia, what do we have for the community today? So today, we're going to be going over uh, unique items like the architectural elements millwork components and also recreating your client's office space using both an environment photo and the KOE catalog. So we're going to show the client what the new layout looks like against an adjacent area. The client's sitting area was created near a kitchenette, so that access to the area would be easy for guests to walk over to. So Franklin is now going to show you how to use those millwork components to recreate this space. All right, thanks a lot, Julia. So uh, before we start, what I want to do is uh, I just want to quickly review uh, the little area that uh, we were working on last week. So I'm just going to go quickly into my photos. And there's a quick little shot of the, uh, the client space. So you can see here on the right-hand side uh, of the image there, uh, the little kitchen, uh, kitchenette area. So basically, the new layout was to uh, uh, be adjacent to this kitchenette area so that guests could have access to uh, water, cups, coffee, whatever it is, uh, as they're waiting for their clients. And as you can see here in plan, uh, you can see at the bottom right, uh, we have the kitchenette area on plan, and then the two columns as well as that curtain wall in the very back that we uh, recreated last week. All right? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just quickly open up the project. Now, so we did a review of the architectural elements category last week, and I showed you how to use each component uniquely. Today, I'll be going into our millwork category and show you how to recreate uh, the office kitchen areas using the structural options. So here I'm going to go ahead and open up the project. So this is pr pretty much where we left off last week. Uh, however, I made sure that I added all our little... Uh, uh, my five favorite items here, we have Ken, uh, my uh, office guy sitting at the desk with his laptop, his nice red mug telephone, and that nice plant uh, just behind him. So those are my decorative items that I like to use in every scene. And then this is the uh, recreated uh, environment that we did using the KOE catalog last week. So let's now move on to the millwork area, which is this little area here, just as in plan. So you can see we have the entry door, the millwork area that's uh, in this is going to be uh, placed in this empty space, which is going to be adjacent to our new uh, guest seating area. All right. So first things first is uh, I'm going to just quickly zoom into this area, and now I'm going to go ahead and open up the KOE catalog by going to Add Item, and now going to the Kit Design Collection, and going into Architectural Elements. So again, here are all the different components that you can use that we used uh, last week to build uh, this scene. This week, what I want to do is I want to do a focus on the millwork uh, uh, element. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on millwork. And you can see here we have uh, some options. We have our base cabinets, upper cabinets, and worktops. Uh, so the first, uh, a good area to start here would be the, with the base cabinets. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on base cabinets. And then again, let's do a quick review of what we see here. So we have different size cabinets, which are all roughly about uh, 24 inches in, in depth, uh, which are all at the uh, standard uh, 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 cabinet height, which is, uh, I believe, uh, 36. So here we have a 15 by 24, 24 by 24, a 30 inch by 24, then 36 by 24, 48 by 24, and then we also have closing base cables. Okay? And I'm going to show you how to use a series of these to, uh, uh, to build. Uh, and, and how it all works. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and bring in this 4824 by double tapping on the image and then dragging it into my scene. All right, great. So there's that base cabinet. I'm just going to go into plan view. And I don't know what the actual kitchenette size um, is. Um, however, the idea here is that you're creating a graphic that best represents uh, your client space. It doesn't have to be exact because you're not here to sell them uh, a new uh, cabinet uh, for, their, for their kitchenette. You're here to sell them on uh, why that layout works so well with this uh, kitchenette. So I'm just going to quickly go. And what I did to close off this area was I added a 10-foot wall uh, so that I could work with uh, the sizing of the kitchenette cabinets uh, to recreate that space. So here I just added a, a nice 48-inch uh, base. Now I'm going to create a duplicate. And I'm going to leave this space open because 
uh, on plan and in the image that we saw of, uh, of the uh, client space, there is a little bar fridge that sits under there. Although we don't have bar fridges uh, that are part of kits yet or the KOE catalog, uh, we should uh, actually leave those spaces open um, to, again, best represent what goes into that uh, space. So there you can see that I have my uh, two 48-inch cabinets, all with oversized doors. But before I even start uh, 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 changing everything, I'm going to go back into my KOE catalog, and then I'm going to go add this base cable, bring it into the space, and I'm just going to add it to the side here to close off uh, the actual millwork. You can utilize this at any ha uh, any way you want. You don't necessarily have to close off that uh, that base area. Uh, I like to do it just to uh, create a, a, a nice clean millwork area. Use your judgment when you're building uh, these scenes as to what works best for you. Right? So now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go back into the KOE catalog. And now we're going to go back and uh, we're going to go ahead and add our worktops. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on worktops and now on countertops. What you see here are a series of different size countertops. These all match the base cabinets that we've created so that you know that uh, uh, the 15-inch countertop will fit the 15-inch uh, uh, base uh, cabinet. All right. So since I brought in two 48s, I'm going to go ahead and double tap on the 48 by 25-inch uh, countertop. Go into my plan view, and now drag it into into its place. Quickly duplicate that and add it beside it. And now we need to bring in one more, which is going to be a 24, because like I said in the beginning, that's a 10-foot wall. I have two 48s, which makes up eight feet. Now we need to finish it off. All right, there we go. And now let's bring this into place. Perfect. Go into 3D view, and now you can see we have the base cabinets completed, uh, each with uh, their cabinets, uh, each with their countertops. Uh, that match uh, that are sitting on top. Now let's go ahead and double tap on one of the base cabinets. So here, just like uh, you see with the manufacturer symbols, you have your option structure, which allows you to change different colors, uh, select pull finishes, uh, and then at the bottom you see options. Okay, so let's start off with cabinet color. And here, you again, you can go between your wood veneers and your laminates. If I want to just look at wood veneers, I can go ahead and tap on that, and it'll show me only wood veneers, or if I want to look at laminates, I can tap on that, and it'll only show me laminates. And then I can further my filter by choosing the colors that I want to look at by selecting as many filters as I want. Here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my wood veneers, and I'm going to go ahead and pick a color that best represents uh, uh, those cabinets that were there. So I'm going to go ahead and pick uh, natural pear. Now I'm going to go ahead and tap on next, and here I'm going to choose the finish, which is going to be sent nickel, and I'm going to tap on next. So this is important here, and this is what we call a structural option. So now you can see that uh, I have uh, about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different options to choose from. Each one has a different uh, type of component, uh, which allows me to change the face of my cabinet. So this is the structural option that you see that will change the graphic, but in reality also changes the structure of the model. Some manufacturers actually have this in place for a lot of their furniture uh, uh, series, uh, especially uh, uh, seating. So with seating, you can choose uh, to have arms, no arms, lumbar support, anything that changes the actual structure of the chair. Uh, some manufacturers actually have it uh, so that you can actually choose it as an option. So at first, you know that uh, the 4DW4 drawer is the default option for that graphic. As you can see that I've tapped it, but nothing has been done to the actual image that's in uh, the little uh, edit item menu. Now, if I tap on C, uh, 6DW-6 drawer, you can now see the changes being made. So there you can go ahead and start reviewing what all these changes um, do, and so you can get familiar with uh, what's available for you to use uh, in terms of the structural option. So I'm going to go ahead and keep this four-door alternate. And now I'm going to tap on Done. So you can now see that it has changed, it has changed the actual faces of, uh, of my cabinets. It has also provided me a nice sink cutout so that my sink 
fits in without uh, being obstructed by any kind of uh, panel. All right. So what I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and double tap on the base gable, and I'm going to make sure that I also choose that same finish. All right, great. So let's continue on to uh, going into the countertops. I'm going to double tap on the first one. I'm going to go into material. And here what we're going to do is we're going to simply use uh, a, a laminate. And we're just going to go with a white laminate. So let's go ahead and find laminates there. And then select our filter. And here I can go ahead and add Chantilly Lace. Now I'm going to tap on Replace All, tap on Next. And right now I'm going to go ahead and use the double sink. So you can see here our countertops also have the options. The options are showing no sink, a single 36 inch sink, and then a double sink. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and keep the double sink and I'm going to tap on done. So you can see the finishes being applied to all the countertops. Now I'm going to go to the second countertop. This time I'm going to go into the behavior and project. I'm going to keep this one separate, go into my options, just tap on uh, the structural options there. I'm going to say no sync. Now I'm going to close, and you can see that change made. All right. As well, I'm going to tap on the second base cabinet here. Again, go into the behavior and project. Go back into the options. And this time, I'm going to pick the uh, cabinets with the drawers. All right. So you can see how quickly I was able to make that little kitchenette area. So what we can do now is we can continue on with adding more elements like the what we have here is basically the side splashes and the backsplash. So again, I'm going to go into backsplashes. You can see that each backsplash uh, matches the actual size of the cabinets that we already have uh, available for you to use. So since I know I need two 48s, I'm going to go ahead and double tap on 48. I drag it into the space. And now I'm just going to best fit it where I can. Let's go into plan view. Create that duplicate. And then we're going to go back in and get that uh, 24 inch. Add that to the project. And the nice backsplash is done there. So let's go ahead and add the side splashes. So if you're not familiar with uh, kitchen design, don't worry. You're not here to be a kitchen designer. Uh, really, what you're here uh, to do is create a graphic that best represents your client space. And again, you can set this any way you want. You can see what it looks like uh, in 3D view. What I like to do is I actually like to push my side splashes into the backsplash, so you're given that little front gap, uh, similarly like uh, 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 what kitchen designers do. Now I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that. And now I'm going to take this one and I'm going to drag it over to the other side, and you can see where the actual uh, lip starts and uh, uh, where the back part of the actual splash is because you have a nice straight line where the front end has a nice eased edge. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that the right way and drag it into the space. Now I'm going to double tap on that splash and we're going to go ahead and select the material which is laminate and we're looking at whites and that was Chantilly Lace. Tap on done and you can see that it has now changed all my splashes. All right, so we're nearly done there. All we now need to do is add our upper cabinets. And again, the easy thing to do is since we know that uh, we have specific sizes for our base cabinets that make up 10 feet, let's make sure that we bring in 248 and 124 because those match what we have selected at the bottom. And uh, we can create a nice seamless match with our base cabinets. I'm going to double tap on that one more time. Select Replace All, go into my wood veneers, and select that same finish. You know we're using a set nickel pole. And now for the options, what I want to do is I want to use four doors. And uh, let's see if we can find which one. Best thing to do is get familiar with all the different uh, shapes and sizes that you can uh, play with. 
uh, because there are so many different options you can do that changes the configurations of your cabinet. Um, again, that best uh, 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 that best reflects what uh, what you see at your client site. So once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and tap on done, and you can see here that for some reason this cabinet is just shy short. So I'm going to use my three finger gesture to raise it up, and there you have it. That's how quickly I was able to build that millwork package. And now you can see uh, why the client wanted uh, the uh, the new guest si sitting area. Um, to be uh, somewhat close to that uh, kitchenette area. So what I recommend you do at this uh, point is find the best angle you want to use to create that beautiful rendering. And so that's how quickly I was able to use the millwork uh, uh, package. All right, so there's the uh, nice image we have. Now I can go to my uh, export to photo library to make sure I save that in case I want to use it for, uh, for a later uh, time. All right, great. So we have uh, these beautiful all this beautiful scene that's been created using the KOE catalog. What I want to show you now is how to actually fuse the KOE catalog with uh, using some uh, environment photos or sample uh, environment photos that we have. 